Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is another beautiful day that the Lord has allowed us to see. Amen. 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 Just want to welcome you to whoever may be joining us this afternoon to SIG Ministries Empowerment Bible Study. Tuesdays we do Discipleship Bible Study. Thursdays we do um, Bible Study from the Word of the Lord. Amen, amen. Amen. Blessings, blessings. Come on in the room, as they say. Welcome to Stand Gap Ministries Empowerment Bible Study. Please share, please like. Let somebody know that SIG Ministries is live. We're live, we're live. As I said, we do our discipleship training on Tuesdays, and the Lord has graced me to do a Bible study on Thursdays. So you're, you're open to join both of our Bible studies. One is discipleship training through our manual. This one is the Bible study through the word of the Lord. Come on in the room. There's a powerful teaching on tonight. We're going, we're going to dig a little bit. We're going to dig a little bit on tonight. Want to liberate and empower the believer on tonight. And if you're not saved, I want to encourage you to get saved on tonight. And I pray that this teaching helps, helps open your eyes. Some of your eyes need to be open. Amen. Some of you need to be enlightened um, through or empowered through the word of God on this afternoon. So please share. Please like. Let somebody know we're on. Do a watch party. All that good stuff. Um, I'm going to dig as much as I can. I am planning to teach for at least a good 45 minutes or so. So please, if, if you want to ask questions, feel free to ask questions, all that good stuff. Uh, we will be getting started in about a minute or so. Just want to give some people from our ministry and those of you that may want to join us live on today. Um, I believe this, this, this teaching is going to really empower you through the word of the Lord on, on this afternoon. I'm excited that the Lord has graced me um, to teach this lesson. I've spent some time with the Lord throughout last week and even coming into this week um, about going forth in this lesson. Amen. 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 So we'll be getting started just in a minute. Just come on in. Give me some likes. Give me some shares. Let me know that you hear me on this afternoon. Um, get your Bible. So we're going to go through the scriptures on tonight or this afternoon. We're going to go through scriptures. So please get your Bibles. Um, pray that you have an open mind and heart to the word of the Lord on this afternoon. Thank God for those who are on. Um, thank you for just taking just a few minutes of this beautiful day just to join in. Um, I pray that you get something out of this teaching. I'm going to go ahead and open up with a prayer. Father in heaven, we just come to you right now. We thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to teach your word, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for just me being the vessel that you desire to use on this afternoon, I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you just purify our minds and our hearts. Forgive us for the sinful things that we may have said, done, in ways that we have acted or reacted in ways that were not pleasing to your eyesight, Father God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will get all the glory and the praise that everything that is said and done, that no flesh will glory in your sight, Father God. I even pray right now that everybody that may tune in, whether it's one person or it's 10 people or 100 people, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you give them an ear to hear what you have to say. We pray that they have an open heart and open mind and open ears, Father God, to hear from you on this afternoon, Father God. We thank you for this opportunity. We don't count this opportunity light, Father God, because we are speaking to your children, Father God, and we're speaking to those who um, need to be saved, Father God, those who need you in their lives, Father God. And so we just pray that you speak mightily on this afternoon and we give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. What we're going to get into tonight, as you know, this is Pentecost Sunday is coming this Sunday. Um, and um, and we call this Pentecost week, if I can say that, or things leading up to Pentecost. And what the Lord had dropped in my spirit was counterfeit power, counterfeit power, counterfeit power, that we have God who is has all power, okay, but then we have a counterfeit power 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 one that is trying to resemble God and his power but is not God and so I want to get into this study on tonight and when we look 
I'm going to get right in on into it. As we break the word down, counter, counterfeit, counter. When we break the word counter down, it means to speak or to act in opposition um, or to fight against. And so when we think about Satan and we think about the demons, the imps, all that kind of good thing, they are speaking or trying to act in opposition, okay? In opposition, what they're, they're, they're trying to fight against the work of the Lord. They try to fight against us as believers. When you look at the word fit, counterfeit, Fit means F-E-I-T. It is a suffix and it means false or intended to deceive or to carry a, the appearance of being genuine or real. Let me say this again. So fit, F-E-I-T, is a suffix and it means, to, it means false or intended to deceive or carry the appearance of being genuine and real. So this is what the enemy tries to do. This is what Satan tries to do. We're going to get into some of the scriptures of how he tries to counterfeit, how he tries to uh, imitate God. You're going to hear the, this word a lot. He tries to imitate God um, and, and his power. And I like this the, the latter part of this definition because it says he carries the presence of being genuine. He carries the presence. Satan and his demons and his imps, they try to carry their presence as if they're God. Okay? They try to, even though they're not real, now, I'm not saying demons are not real. The, the power and, and them trying to imitate God, is, they, they can't be God, but they're trying to imitate God. And so that's what counterfeit, when you look at the definition, it means to resemble closely. Okay, counterfeit means to resemble close. So what the enemy is trying to do, he is trying to resemble God as close as he, as he possibly can. He is trying to pretend to or to pretend to be God. Okay, he wants to falsely um, imitate God. One of the scriptures, um, uh, before I really jump into the lesson on tonight, is in Matthew 12 and 45. Um, I want to show you how the enemy tries to uh, imitate God. Okay, here it is. This is a familiar scripture. Matthew 12 and 45, before I really jump into it, is dealing with a return of the unclean spirit. Watch this. This is when an unclean spirit goes out of a man. It passes through the dry places seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to the house from which I came. And it, and when it comes, it finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings what? Seven other spirits. Okay. To dwell in there. So where, where, where are we going with this? S Satan tries to imitate God. We know biblically or spiritually that seven means the number of completion but you see here that he tries to bring seven more demons he's trying to imitate god and and, and this is what he tries to do and i got other scripture that um uh, but what the scriptures really pertain to is that as jesus talked about binding the strong man okay we know at one point in time before you accepted christ into your life the strong man satan had just had us bound he had us bound. And Jesus says in his parable, it's the only way you can, you can overtake the, the house. You have to bind the strong man. So when, when you accept Jesus into your life, he comes in and he binds the strong man. He kicks Satan out. Because the Bible says, do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? This is where Christ dwells. This is where the Spirit of God dwells. God has created this body for a reason, so for a place for him to dwell. He didn't create this body for Satan to dwell in your body. He didn't create this body for you to do what you want to do with your body. No, this body that God's created belongs to him. You don't know, if you're not a believer, you don't know that. It don't make sense to you of, of why um, th this body belongs to God. But the, he, it tells us in Genesis, Genesis that we're created in his image. Okay? It tells us these things. But what the scripture is telling, I'm just trying to point out the number seven. I don't get into all the numbers, but I understand the numbers. But he tries to imitate God. Whatever God does, he tries to mirror what God does. This is how the enemy deceives us. He tries to reflect or mirror what God does. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to tell the difference of is this God or is this Satan? You won't be able to tell the difference because he is very good at deception. He is very, Satan and his demons are very good as imitating God, but it's not God. Okay. And so we need to know there's a counterfeit power. 
The power that you need is the Holy Ghost. But there is a counterfeit power that's trying to imitate the real power, okay? But it's not the real thing, all right? There's nothing worse than going to a jewelry store, okay? And, 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 and you, when you go to this jewelry store, you're thinking that you're purchasing the real thing. But no, it's just an imitation. It has the appearance as if it's real gold. It has the appearance as this, this, this jewelry is real, but it's not real. There's nothing worse than to purchase something that's not real. Okay? So what are we going to get into? The first scripture I want to turn to, dealing with counterfeit power. Okay? You need, listen, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Ghost? It is God's spirit in you. God lives within you. God is holy and God is a spirit. He is the Holy Spirit lives within you. That's what the Holy Spirit is. The third person of the Trinity. Trinity is not in the Bible, but he is the third person. These three are one, the Bible says. So first scripture you're going to go to. 1 John 4 and 1. It says, Beloved, do not believe what every spirit, but test the spirits to see Watch this. Don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are of God. Okay, what do you mean test the spirit? You, if you have the Holy Spirit, he gives you the ability to see. He gives you the ability to discern um, the spirit of a person. Is this, is this spirit, this person carrying the spirit of Christ? Is this person carrying the spirit of anger? This person carrying the spirit of fear? He gives us the ability to discern what spirit you're dealing with. There's people that come in and out of your life. And you need, realistically, you need the Holy Ghost to discern these different people because they carry different types of spirit. Everybody don't carry the spirit of Christ. Everybody don't. So what John is telling us, he says, listen, beloved. Do not believe every spirit, but test, discern, do an, do a, do a, do an inspection. Uh, everybody that say they say is not saved. Everybody say they are a Christian is not, is not a Christian. Okay? You need to discern. Okay? Listen, I will say this. The Holy Ghost will speak for himself. Get that in your spirit. Listen, you ain't got to you, you ain't got to do all this extra stuff. If you really got the Holy Ghost, you really got the Spirit of God on the inside, He will speak for Himself. He will bear witness of Himself through you. Okay, one way or another, if you really got the Holy Ghost, He will bear witness. He will bear witness of Himself through you. Okay, and and what do I mean by that? If you really have the Holy Ghost and somebody else has the Holy Spirit. They're able to say, yeah, I, I can tell you got the Holy Ghost. Or I can tell, okay, I, I'm picking up in my spirit. I'm discerning in my spirit. That's why you need the Holy Ghost, because some of you cannot discern, okay? Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot properly discern, all right? I know you. I know they say, well, women got this intuition. Okay, I, I, I ain't against that intuition. But listen, the Holy Ghost will help reveal, because the Holy Ghost is a revealer. He will reveal to you truth. Listen, there's something about, listen, a woman's intuition, listen, that ain't the Holy Ghost. That's something within you able to kind of pick up on some things, but you really need the Holy Ghost to really pick up on things. So John is telling us that you need to test, you need to, you need to discern these spirits because every spirit is not of God. All right. So now this brings me to this point. It's either, it's either you're under Demonic influence by deception or, I'm looking at my notes, I'm sorry, or you're, you're operating in God's divine power. Let me say this again. You're, it's either or. It's either you're under Satan's influence or demonic influence, which is by deception, or you have the Holy Spirit and you're operating in this divine power. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. This is going to get good. Because there are some people, they're not saved. You don't have the Spirit of God. And, you, and, and, and to be demon-possessed, that means you have to invite Satan in to be demon-possessed. So you're saying, well, I'm not demon-possessed 
You know, I'm a good person. I was raised right morally. All this good stuff. Because we have a lot of beautiful, good, moral, hardworking, loving, giving people. But they don't have the spirit of Christ. Watch where I'm going with this. So it's either you have the spirit of Christ and you're operating in the divine power of the Holy Ghost. Or if you don't have the spirit of Christ, then you're you're under the demonic power or influence. I don't want to use the word power right now, but influence of Satan. Satan, listen, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You're not a threat to Satan's kingdom. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not a threat to him. It's those who have accepted Christ, those who have the Holy Spirit are a threat to the kingdom of darkness, are a threat to the kingdom of God. So watch this. You don't have the spirit of God on the inside of you. So you're saying, well, well, I'm not demon possessed. So how am I under the demonic influence? Well, Satan will deceive you into thinking that you don't need to get saved, that the life that you're living is good. See, Satan will deceive you into make you think that what you're doing is okay. Okay. He, may, he will deceive you. You're under his influence. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're under satanic or demonic influence. He will, what I mean by influence, he will deceive you into thinking that you, you're doing all right. Man, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, you know, you, you're doing all, listen, you're not a threat. If you don't have the spirit of God, you're not a threat to his kingdom. Keep doing what you're doing. See, and you've heard me say this before. Good people don't go to heaven. Bad people don't go to hell. Good people don't go to heaven. Bad people don't go to hell. So that means that the only reason why I don't go to heaven or yes, is I didn't accept Christ. That's the reason why a good person that, that will go to hell because they have not accept Christ. It says clearly in the Bible, Jesus, they, they came before Jesus. Said, didn't we do this in your, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do all, didn't we do all these mighty works in your name? Didn't we do all these good deeds in your name? The Bible talks about this. You got these good hearted moral people. They're feeding the poor. They're giving money. They're doing all these, the, these great works, but they don't have the spirit of God, nor are they saved, but they're doing all these great works. And what does the word say? He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So what qualifies me to work for the kingdom of God is that I must have the spirit of God to work for the kingdom of God. If I don't have the spirit of God, then I'm operating or I'm under demonic influence. You're, oper you're under demonic deception. This is what I'm talking about. You're under demonic deception. God, Satan's job is to deceive you. To make you think that you don't need to get saved. To make you think that the life you live in is okay without God. Okay, you don't need Jesus. That's why so many people are deceived now. When you start bringing up Jesus, oh, Jesus ain't real. He ain't real. That He ain't this color. He ain't that. He's not this. This is what we're dealing with in this time. Okay, this is how the enemy deceives you. To make you think that it's all about, Christianity is all about the color of Jesus. No, I, I, I've said this before, and I'm going to get into this, continue to go on with my teaching. If you Google right now, how does Jesus look in Japan or how does Jesus look in Korea? You're not going to see a black one, a white one. Uh, he's going to look Japanese or Chinese. You can Google it right now. I've done it. No matter what country, he's going to resemble them. America, he resembles what America looks like. That doesn't mean that's who he is. But Satan, he will deceive you like this. So what he tries to do, he tries to imitate, which means to copy or to follow as a model of Satan tries to mimic God is what he tries to do. This is what he tries to do. So how do we know that he tries to mimic God? Let's get into the scripture. Hope you got your Bibles. Because what the Lord has clearly told me, he says, the reason why I'm allowing you to go forth in this teaching, he says, I'm calling you to expose the enemy, but to liberate my people. That some of you need to be set free from Satan's deception. He's influenced you. He has deceived you. 
so bad to the point where you think that the life that you're living is good. And God is saying, no, no, it's not. So the first scripture I want to go to, to, to prove to you through the scriptures of how Satan tries to mimic God. Watch this. Let's go to Isaiah, uh, the 14th chapter. I'm going to read 12 through 14. Go to the book of Isaiah, 14th chapter. We're going to go through some scriptures tonight. I'm going to try to get this done in about 30 minutes. So listen, stay with me. Stay with me. This teaching is to expose the enemy, but then to liberate you, to set you free. Okay? All right? Whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. That means it's a guarantee. You're set free. So here it is. Isaiah 14, 12. I'm going to read 12 through 14. Watch this. It says, how are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Remember I said this. O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You were weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, this is Satan, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne. That's pride. Above the stars of God. I will sit also on the mount of, of the congregation in the recess of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. So here's the prophet Isaiah. He foresees the fall of Satan or Lucifer. Um, he sees his fall. This is what was in uh, Lucifer or Satan's heart. He thought he could be God. He clearly says it in, in here. He says, I will be like the most high. Okay. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. All right. Hold on to that. Hold on to that. Because in there, in the book of Revelations, um, 22 and 16, I know some of these Bibles read different. Son of the morning. We're going to read Revelations 22 and 16. Now, some Bibles will say morning star. It says son of the morning, but some Bibles will say morning star. This is the reason why I want you to hold on to that. O Lucifer, son of the morning. Some Bible says morning star. Revelations told you counterfeit power. He's trying to mimic God. All right, watch this. Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with the testimony for the churches. Watch this. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. So this is what I've been talking about. That it's a counterfeit power. Satan is trying to mimic God because if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're not able to tell whether this is uh, the morning star or the bright and morning star. He is trying to deceive us and you have to have the Holy Ghost to tell the difference. Is this the morning star, Lucifer, or is this the bright and morning star? We're talking about Jesus. When you accept Jesus into your life, he is the bright and morning star. He shows you that Satan is not him. He's not him. Hallelujah. Let's, let's continue. I want to show you how Satan tries to mimic God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. We're going to read 12 through 15. Counterfeit power. It resembles closely. Satan is trying to resemble God as close as he possibly can. He would never be God, but he wants to resemble him. As much as possible. Okay. Counterfeit power. All right. He's false. He gives this illusion as if he has all power. What I want you to know is that Satan has already been defeated. If you're in Christ, you will know through the word of God and pick up in your spirit that 
Only the believer will understand that he's been defeated because we understand what Jesus did on the cross. He conquered death. He conquered the grave. He took the keys. He went into Hades and took the keys uh, of death and the grave from Satan. So that's why for us as believers, we're not afraid of death or we shouldn't be. Because this body goes back to the ground. It goes back to where it came from. But our soul, our spirit goes with him, with our heavenly father. All right. Satan has been defeated. The unbeliever, it doesn't matter to them. They don't they don't care. This doesn't make sense to them that Satan is defeated because they don't think that they're under Satan or demonic uh, influence. They don't they don't understand that they're under demonic influence. It's not until you accept Christ into your life. You realize that I was under demonic influence. But as long as you are don't have the spirit of Christ, you think you're OK. But you're under demonic influence. Satan is influencing you to live the life that you've been living. Because you're cool. All right, let me get into this. All right, 2 Corinthians 11 chapter, 12 through 15. Watch this. We're, we're exposing the enemy. We're exposing Satan. But the God says, not only am I going to expose Satan tonight, but he says, I'm here to liberate you and to set you free through the word of the Lord. If you receive it and accept it on tonight, watch this. Second Corinthians 11, 12 through 15. Here we go. He says, and I will, this is apostle Paul talking to the church of Corinth. He writes this letter to the church of Corinth. He says, and I will continue to do doing what I am doing. Apostle Paul says, I'm going to continue to do the kingdom work, the, the call of an apostle and the work that I'm assigned to. I'm going to continue to do it. He said that I may cut off the opportunity for those from those who desire an opportunity to be be found equal to us. Talking about to his fellow apostles um, and that they boast. So what he's saying is I'm going to continue to do the apostolic work that I've been assigned to by God to do. So I can show you the difference or to cut off. OK, those who are trying to do the same work but are boasting about it, okay? Boasting about the kingdom work is not of God. We don't, we're, 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 God doesn't call us to boast about the kingdom work. So Apostle Paul says, listen, I'm going to continue to do what the Lord has instructed me to do, to prove those false apostles, okay? So once again, I always tell people, how do you not believe in apostles? But Apostle Paul is saying, we got apostles that are called by God, commissioned by God, okay? And then they must be those who are called themselves apostles. They're not called by God, all right? Verse 13 says this, for such are what? False apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Watch this. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. We told you counterfeit power. Satan is disguising himself, the word of God says, as an angel of light. Now, he was an angel, and he was an angel of light. He was a beautiful angel at one point in time, and he still disguises himself with this beauty because God created him. He was a beautiful creation. Let's, let's, he's not that red person that you see on the cartoons. That's not him. But he disguises himself as an angel of light. Hmm. So he dis Lucifer disguised himself as the morning star. But we know Jesus is the bright and morning star. We now see that he disguises himself as an angel of light. Now let's turn to John 8 and 12. Because you need to know the difference. John 8 and 12. John 8 and 12. Here it is, John 8 and 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, I am. I am means, I got my I am, I am shirt on. I am concerned shirt on today. I am means no other. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Jesus says, I am. There is no other. So he says, I am 
the light of the world. What he's basically saying, there is no other light of the world but me. The believer has the light of Christ within us. So we illuminate and carry Jesus within us, which he is the light of the world. That's why the Bible says we are the salt and the light of the earth. Okay, does the light hide itself under a bushel? No. All right. So what is it? What, what, what are we doing? We're exposing the enemy. Enemy says in 2 Corinthians 11, 12 through 15, that he is an angel of light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So there is no other light. The only light that we function and operate in is the light of Christ. OK, that's the only light that is should be within us. If you are under satanic or under demonic influence by Satan, that means you allowed him to deceive you. You would think that Satan or Lucifer is this light. You would think that he's the light. But he's not that light. Jesus says, I am no other light but me. Let's go to Ephesians. Almost done with these scriptures. I want to get into some other things. Ephesians 2 and 2. Please share. Please tag somebody. Please let somebody know. This is counterfeit power. This is Pentecost week. Pentecost Sunday is this Sunday. And we see the believers were empowered by the Holy Ghost. All right. The true divine power of God. But there's another power that's operating and is trying to mimic God. Here it is. Ephesians 2 and 2. I'll read verse one. And when you were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you formerly walked according to the age of this world and according to the prince of the power of the air. What Apostle Paul is saying, he's writing to these believers in Ephesus. He's saying, listen, at one point in time before you got saved, um, he says, you were dead in the trespass of your sin. You was dead in your sins. You was on your way to hell. You was dead in your sins. For the wages of sin is death. He says, in which you were formerly walking according to the, your, you, you, your life was a reflection of this present world. You were, you were living as this world, the ways of this world. For the Bible tells do not be conformed to this world. But you were before you got saved, you were living according to this world. Watch this. He said, and according to the prince of the power of the air. Hmm. So Satan in this scripture is revealed as the prince of the air. Prince in the atmosphere. Okay. We understand Satan is a spirit. Okay. He, can, he doesn't have the power or the ability to be everywhere at once like God. He doesn't have that ability. Okay. That's why he has demons and imps. Satan is omni. I mean, Jesus is, or God is omnipresent. God can be everywhere at once. So this shows you the distinction of the counterfeit power. Okay? That's why you can't say, well, when the devil doing this, the devil, half the time it ain't the devil. And I did a teaching, it's you. It's not the devil. The devil can't be everywhere at once. Okay? He doesn't have the same ability or power that God has. God is omnipresent. He can be everywhere. That's why the Bible tells you in Proverbs 15 and 3, the eyes of the Lord is everywhere beholding good and evil. That means God is everywhere. He sees good. He sees evil. He's presently, when it says eyes of the Lord, he's presently everywhere. Satan is not presently everywhere. Scripture says he walks to and fro. Walks to and fro. Okay. Exposing the enemy. Stop blaming it on the devil. Watch this. So we see here, he's a prince of the air. Now, we go back to the book of Isaiah. We're going to find something unique. And I will refer to the scripture two times. Isaiah 9 and 6. We're back to the prophet Isaiah. We call him the eagle eye prophet because he foresaw salvation. He foresaw the Messiah. He foresaw his suffering. He foresaw all of this. Okay. Before it happened. So even though he wasn't living in the time that the scriptures was fulfilled, but he saw, foresaw these things. So here it is. Isaiah 9 and 6. Now my Bible reads a little bit different, but no, we're good. It says, for unto us, 
a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, remember this one, Eternal Father or Everlasting Father, and also Prince of Peace. Satan, the prince of air. Jesus, the prince of peace. Okay? He's the prince of peace. But you see how Satan tries to mimic. He tries to copy. He tries to resemble closely. Okay? All right? Only, only other natural example I can give you is Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. There's only one Michael. Okay? And no matter how much Kobe resembles Michael's game on the court, guess what? He still ain't Michael. It's only one Michael. It's only one Kobe. Okay? Kobe's game resembled so closely. He did every move to the T, but he still ain't Michael. Satan's the same way. He can try to resemble God in all the possible ways, but he still ain't God. As Kobe is not Michael, Satan, and I'm not saying Satan, I'm, I'm not saying Kobe is Satan, just using this analogy, because some of you folk are taking and running with it. He said Kobe was Satan. No, I'm using this analogy that as Kobe tried to be like Mike, there's only one Mike. Can't be like Mike. All right? So we see in these scriptures that I've showed you that he tries to mimic. The other one, the, they call it the unholy trinity. And you're reading Revelations 20 and 10 where it talks about Satan, the beast, and the false prophet. We know God operates in threes. He works in threes, all right? He works in threes. So you read in Revelation 20 and 10, Satan, the beast, and the false prophet. Now watch this. We read in 1 John 5 and 7, Father, the Word, which is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says these three are one, okay? So we see counterfeit power. We see that Satan is trying to mimic, he is trying to copy everything that God does, okay? And we see this in the scripture. And I just read to you, um, John 8 and 44 says, Satan is the father of lies. You'll find in Isaiah 9 and 6, which I just read, Jesus is the everlasting father. He's the eternal father, okay? All right? What am I doing tonight? Once again, for some of you are jumping on and off, that's fine. Is that this is counterfeit power. Is either you have the spirit of Christ through the Holy Ghost or you are under the demonic influence. It's one or the other. Okay? All right? It's one or the other. So two portions of scriptures. I got literally 15 minutes. I'm going to knock these scriptures out. Um, we're going to go to the book of Acts. Uh, the ninth chapter, um, verse 9 through 13. The book of Acts. And what I want to say is this, is that you cannot buy the Holy Ghost. You cannot buy. The, the, the power of God is not bought with a price. You can't put a price on it. You are... In, the Holy Spirit, one, is a gift. And the Bible tells us in Acts 1 and 8 that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. So this is delegated by God, by faith, because we believe in Jesus. He empowers us through the Holy Spirit, okay? So you cannot buy the power of God. Where am I going with this? In, in, in Acts, the eighth chapter, we see a story here where Philip the evangelist, he is full of the Holy Spirit. He's operating in the divine fullness power of God. How do we know this? Because the Bible says that he is casting out demons. He's healing the sick. And Jesus said it very clearly that you know the kingdom of God is present when the power of God overpowers the power of darkness. Okay? So whenever a demon is cast out of an individual, by somebody operating in the power of God, the, the kingdom of God is present. Jesus, his own self, out of his mouth. Okay? 
So, Philip the evangelist, full of the Holy Ghost, operating in the power of God, casting out demons, healing the sick, all this good thing. Here's a man named Simon. They call him Simon the sorcerer, okay? When you look up sorcery, it deals with witchcraft, um, deals with practicing spells, operating in demonic power. Um, necromancy is something that is also brought up. Um, you will see this with uh, Apostle Paul, uh, not Apostle Paul, um, Saul in the Old Testament. Necromancy, when you're tapping into the dead, you're speaking to the dead. Okay, you see a lot of this on some of these 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 horror movies you watch, um, tapping into the dead, speaking to the dead, and so Saul, um, as we know, King Saul, Samuel dies, and if you and you you can Google this, I, I didn't I should have wrote down a scripture where where I studied this, but he was in necromancy. Necromancy is where he's tapping into the dead. He went to a somebody that can see into the future. Okay. Now, I will say this. The Bible says the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. There are some people that have the gift of prophecy, but they're using it in a demonic way. They're prostituting their gift. Okay? It's a gift from God, but they're not using it to the glory of God. Okay? People have a gift to sing, but they're not using their gift to sing for the glory of God. That's why it says the gift and the calling. The gift of God is on your life. He gave you the gift. You can preach or do whatever you do. You can prophesy, okay? But they're using it in sorcery. They're using it in witchcraft. So when you go to a palm reader and people in the tarot cards and all this kind of stuff, all this demonic witchcraft stuff, they have the gift of a prophet. They can foresee just as a prophet. You see how Satan tries to, how they use that gift to try to mimic God. So he has a gift that was given from God, he's using it to glorify Satan, not glorifying God. He can still see into the future, okay? Because it's a gift. He has a prophetic gift to see, but he's using it not according to the way God had given it to him to use it. So this is what necromancy is. He's tapping into the dead. So this is what Saul, Saul did, King Saul did. He goes to a, a, a man that, that practices that, that witchcraft, you see it even on uh, uh, what is that black the, the movie it was the Panther Black Panther that, where he dies and they, they they tap into that necromancy going in tapping into the dead he was able to see his dead father okay all right that's witchcraft all right this is so you let you know good movie but that's witchcraft it is what it is um. But yes, Saul does this. He, he didn't have no directions. Samuel's dead. The prophet Samuel, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament, is dead. And he summons Samuel. The, 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 the sorcerer that he's speaking to says, I see a man with a, with a beard and all this. And it, and, and it resembled, and it, which it was, it was Samuel. He summoned Samuel. Okay? This is necromancy. All right? Not gonna get too much more into it because it'll throw me off, and I want to be done in about 10, 15 minutes. But Simon the sorcerer, it talks about he bewitched, it means he was tricking the people as if he had real power. Okay? Counterfeit power. He's operating in sorcery. He's operating as if he got real power. He's operating in witchcraft. Okay? He bewitched the people. And the Bible says. He's bewitched them for so long. He's tricked them for so long. But Simon sees something that he doesn't have. He knows he's been tricking people. He knows he's been practicing. See, that's how you know it's not the power of God. Because he was, when you look up sorcery, it's something you practice. That means you got to work at it. Okay? You have to work at this. See, the power of God. It speaks for itself. The Holy Ghost, if you really got the Holy Ghost, he's going to speak for himself. He's going to reveal himself through you if you really got it. Okay? So he bewitched the people, and, and they were so tricked for so long. But now, uh, Philip the Evangelist, full of the Holy Ghost, Simon realizes that what Philip has is much greater than what he has. He realized, whoa, this man, this man is doing, Philip is doing something that I don't have the ability to do. 
because Satan can't cast out Satan. So there were people, according to the scripture, that had demonic spirits and Philip, being full of the Holy Ghost, was able to cast out the demon. Here is Simon says, I don't have this power or ability. Okay? Jesus said a house divided can't stand. Satan, Beelzebub can't cast out Beelzebub. Satan can't cast out Satan. All right? So Simon realized I ain't got this kind of power. So what happens is Peter and John shows up on the scene and they're operating in the fullness of the Holy Ghost. And Satan, uh, Simon is so intrigued. He's like, man, I want this thing. He's seen Paul and John laying hands on people and people being filled with the Holy Ghost, people being delivered, people being set free. He said, man, I want this power. How much do it cost? He said, man, how much does power cost? I want this power that you guys got. Peter says, man, perish with your money. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. The only way you can receive the Holy Ghost, you got to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Because the Bible says the same spirit that resurrected Jesus from the dead will resur resurrect you too. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. You can't buy the power of God. You cannot manipulate God for his power. You got to believe in his son to be empowered. I'm, 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 trying, to, I'm trying to liberate some of you. Because some of the people that's going to watch this video that you're not saved and you're under demonic influence by Satan. He has deceived you for so long. He's bewitched you and tricked you and deceived you for so long. He ain't got no real power. He want, Simon wanted to buy the Holy Ghost. Came by. It's a gift. Just received a gift. Received a gift. I did a teaching, the gift of grace. It's a gift. It's a gift. Get that in your spirit. It's a gift. Why are you paying for a gift? That's like somebody, and I got a few more minutes. That's like somebody bought you dinner and you're trying to pay. They're like, why, why, why? Your, your dinner is paid. That's why in the book of Isaiah says, come by. <laughs> he said, you don't need, matter of fact, I'm sorry. He says, you don't need no money. He says, it's free. Salvation is free. It's a gift. You just got to believe by faith. They don't like this kind of teaching. Last story, I'm done. The book of Acts. We're still in the book of Acts, 16th chapter. I'm done after this. Pray that the teaching blessed you. Watch party. Share it. Send it to somebody. All that good stuff. Feel free to follow me on YouTube. I will share that link. Follow me on YouTube. Subscribe. It's a free subscription. Free subscription. All you got to do is click on the link. I will share that link after this. Um, share the link. Click on the link. Subscribe. That's all you got to do. Click on the YouTube link. Subscribe. And you go on about your business. Last thing. 16 chapter, six, Acts 16 chapter, verse 16 through 19. So this text is dealing with a, a, a young girl. That was demon possessed. Okay, this is what the scripture talks about. And her owner, she was a slave. She's a slave girl, but she's demon possessed. So she had the gift of sorcery. And so her owners were making money off of her sorcery, her foretelling, because she was able to foretell. Now we just talked about this. All right. You know, she had a prophetic gift. But she was demonically influenced. It's a gift from God, but she wasn't using it to give God glory. Okay? But it's a demonic influence. All right? So the owners of the slave girl was making money off of her fortune telling, off of her sorcery. All right? So what happens is Paul and those who with Paul is on the scene, she is telling the truth. Let me get to it. 16, and I read it. On one occasion, as we went to the place of prayer, servant girl, slave girl, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, who, who brought her master much profit by fortune telling. Just told you that. She followed Paul and us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. 
Now, what this young girl was doing, what she was saying was true. She said, these men are here to proclaim the gospel. Okay? They're, they're the workers of the kingdom. These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. What she said was so true. But what you need to know is that the power of darkness does not work with the power of light. God does not work hand in hand with Satan. All right? Satan is trying to mimic him. God does not work hand in hand with Satan. So what Paul does, he gets irritated, the Bible says. He gets irritated. And what he does, he casts out the spirit that was controlling her or had her deceived. He cast it out because he was doing the work of the kingdom. And even though the demon possessed girl that was con controlled by this spirit was speaking truth. Okay. Paul had to show that we're not in cahoots, that the power I got is greater than the power she's operating in. Get that in your spirit. The power that we have through the Holy Ghost is greater than the power or the influence of Satan. And so Satan had, uh, Paul had to cast out that deed, had to cast it out. Even though he was speaking truth, the Bible says what? Even, demon, even demons believe in God. When the book of James talking about faith and works. Even demons believe in God, but they would never submit to the point of relationship. Never submit to the point of belief. But they believe and tremble. They believe and tremble. But Paul, Paul had to cast out this demon to show that the power that he was operating in was greater than the power that satanic influence, that satanic power that she was under in the influence. Okay? So on tonight, I pray that this teaching has blessed you. I'm done. The Lord has dropped this word in my spirit about counterfeit power and the plan of the Lord on tonight was to expose the enemy and to liberate you, to expose the enemy and to liberate you. So for some of you that just jumped on, listen, uh, watch the video in its entirety. This was exposing the enemy, but to liberate you and to set you free. That if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are not a threat to the kingdom of God. I don't care how nice of a person you are. I don't care how good of a person you are. I don't care about all the good stuff you do. Hey, I, hey this, this world will applaud, applaud you and give you trophies for all the good stuff that you've done. But if you don't have the spirit of God, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You're not a threat to Satan. You're not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. I want to make this clear. So if you don't have the spirit of God, then you're under the influence of Satan. Okay, he's deceiving you to make you think that the life you're living, the things that you're doing is cool. Just keep doing what you're doing. You smoking weed, man, keep smoking weed. You good. You drinking and partying and, and cussing and, 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 and gluttony and, and robbing folk and stealing things. Man, Satan, like, man, keep doing it. You good. Some folk is selling their souls to the devil for more money and, and for fame and for glory. Listen, they gonna, you're going to die and you're going to hell with all that... And guess what? I'm being real. This is what Satan does. He gives you this appearance that he's genuine, that he's that that he the real deal. He gives this appearance as this. That's why people sell their souls to the devil. All right. That's what they do. They want money. They want the fame. They want the glory. All right. Us as believers, we don't give into that. We can have heaven on earth. Without living ungodly. Let that bless you. You can have heaven on earth. And still live according to God's word. I'm experiencing heaven on earth. Every single day. And I don't have to sell my soul to the devil. To, to, to experience heaven on earth. I don't have to wait to get to heaven. To experience heaven. I'm experiencing heaven right here on earth. But you got to get saved. To experience heaven on earth. Okay. You, you, you got to get saved to, to experience the glory of God. You got to get saved. You got to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. 
Stop allowing Satan to deceive you and to make you think that Jesus ain't real or he's this color, he's this, he's that. That is the trick of the enemy. He wants you to think that Satan, he wants you to think that Jesus is a fake, he's a fraud. No, Satan is the fake and the fraud. He's the one that's trying to imitate God. So don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. I pray that this teacher has blessed you. Listen, I shared a link. If you desire to give on this, this afternoon, feel free to give um, on this afternoon. I want to always encourage you that you're sowing on good ground. You're sowing on good ground. Okay? We are a kingdom-minded ministry to teach kingdom principles. We, we help you in, de in developing and cultivating your relationship with God. It's very important that you learn how to live saved each and every day. Okay? All right? It's very, very important that you learn how to cultivate a healthy relationship with God. Not all this man-made stuff that we grew up hearing about and you, you, you've been bewitched and tricked and all that other kind of stuff. No, if, you, if you're here at Sig Ministries, we're going to help you cultivate a healthy relationship with God. That you can see the power of God flowing through your life. It's just not flowing through my life. No, God has yet called you. He's yet anointed you. You yet have Christ on the inside of you. And listen, he can use you just like he's using me. God is no respect of person. He can use what he wanted. He's sovereign. He can do what he wants to do. But if you desire to be used by him, accept Christ today. Accept him today. Accept Christ today. So feel free to give if you desire to give. If you don't have anything to give, listen, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you sowing your time. And I pray that, you know, the, the blessings of the Lord is upon you for, for sowing your time. Listen, get, this, get this, this teaching to your children, to your teenagers. They need to know the difference, all right? They need to know the difference um, from satanic influence, deception, and the true power of God. I encourage you to join us this Sunday for Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. And, and Jesus clearly said, I, I got to go so I can send the comforter. So um, join us this Sunday at 1030. We got another power pack um, service. Feel free to, uh, to join us live. We are in the transition of working some things out. We're just being patient and seeking the, the, the divine wisdom of God as far as going back to services. I know some of our leaders are probably tired of our Facebook services and all that kind of thing. But we apologize. But we're just trying to follow the leading of God. Okay, this virus is still um, affecting people and still taking out some folk. And so we're, we're praying and interceding on their behalf. But listen, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. The hour is, is, is growing nigh. And um, I pray that you share this video. This video here will be on my YouTube channel. I will share that YouTube channel within the next 10, 15 minutes. Please subscribe. Just click on the link and subscribe. It's just that simple. I'm going to share the link. Click on the link. Hit subscribe, and you can enjoy the rest of your evening. God bless you, and have a blessed evening. Then see you Sunday at 1030.